Hello, and welcome to I Got You, your go-to for honest, simple conversations about vision, eye health, and general wellness. I'm your host, Dr. Valerie Drum, optometrist and total eye nerd. No jargon, no hype, just real talk, grounded in care and expertise. Because your eyes matter, and so do you. This is a space where you're going to feel heard, seen, and supported, and you're going to get some information that you can actually use. So don't worry. I got you. Welcome to I Got You, the podcast where we dive deep into eye health, vision, and general wellness. I'm your host, Dr. Valerie Drum, optometrist and total eye nerd. And today we're going to be talking about a very common and even common in my family and often misunderstood condition age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. You may have heard it called AMD, ARMD, or simply just macular degeneration. Now, it's one of the leading causes of vision loss, especially as we get older. But here's the thing. While it can be serious, there are some things that you can do now to protect your vision, and there are treatments that can make a real difference. So let's dive right in. So what is macular degeneration? Well, Here's some things you need to know. Macular degeneration is painless, and it can start as early as your 50s. For many people, the changes are gradual, a slow shift in your central vision. But for some, those vision changes can happen pretty quickly, and that can feel pretty scary. To really understand what's happening, let's talk about where the macula is. Now, again, I always say, think of your eye like a camera. The front part focuses, the back part takes a picture. Now, at the back of your eye, you've got this thing called the retina. So it's kind of like the film, like the film of the camera. And it's capturing the image that you see, and then it's sending back to the brain for your brain to process what you're looking at. Now, the macula in the retina is the very sweet spot of the retina. Now, this is the area that you're going to be using to get your sharpest, most detailed vision. Things like reading street signs, threading a needle, or recognizing your friend's face down the street. That's your central vision, and that's what AMD affects. When you have AMD, the layers of the retina, well, they begin to break down, and this happens with age. Those breakdowns damage the cells almost like pixels in a digital photo sort of burning out. And as a result, your central vision can become blurry, distorted, or you could develop blind spots. Let's talk about who's at risk of macular degeneration. Well, there are some risk factors for AMD that you can't control. And thankfully, there are ones that you can control. So these are the ones that you can't control. Your age. Well, the older you are, the higher your risk of developing it. Gender. Women are slightly more likely to get macular degeneration possibly than men because we, maybe because we live longer, who knows? There's also a link now they're looking into estrogen and drops in estrogen and our increased risk of AMD. There's family history. If macular degeneration runs in your family, you're going to be three to four times more likely to develop it yourself. There's ethnicity. People of European descent tend to have higher rates of macular degeneration. And then there's drusen. These are deposits that can show up on your retina during your routine eye exam. And they're a warning sign for future AMD risk. And I just learned recently, or maybe I relearned it again, I forgot it probably, that drusen is a German word that means rock. So drusen happens when these retinal cells, they sort of, their garbage or their waste product that the body can't clean up, it sort of just piles up and collects there. Now, it clumps together and it makes something called a drusen. So if you have a lot of drusen, larger ones or ones that are sort of clumping together and making a a little cluster of them, you're going to have a higher risk of developing macular degeneration. Now, let's talk about some of the things that you can control. Well, they're smoking. If you smoke, your risk skyrockets by about as much as two to four times higher than non-smokers. And then there's diet and exercise. A poor diet that's high in fat and low in antioxidants, along with obesity and lack of movement, will raise your risk of macular degeneration. And then there's high blood pressure. Now, this chronic condition reduces the oxygen in your blood, which the retina desperately needs to stay healthy. And then there's UV light. We're still learning about the exact role that UV light plays. But I can say wearing your sunglasses to protect your eyes is always a smart idea. 
So what are some of the symptoms that maybe you should watch for? How do you know if you might have macular degeneration? Here are some of the common signs. Blurry or foggy central vision, even if you've just updated your glasses. Even if your optometrist or ophthalmologist has given you the best prescription possible, something still is a little bit foggy and blurry. And then there's those straight lines. Well, they start to look wavy, uh, like a fence post that sort of suddenly starts to bend or a door frame will look a little bit skewed. And then there's faded or dull colors. You might also notice a dark or an empty spot in your central vision. And if you notice these changes, it's really important to get an eye exam as soon as possible. So let's talk about wet versus dry macular degeneration. You may have heard a lot of talk about this. What's the best one to get? What's the worst one to get? Well, listen, I can tell this honestly to you, neither one of them are something that you want to get, but here's a breakdown of the difference between the two. Let's talk about dry AMD. Now it develops quite slowly. It doesn't involve any bleeding or leaking of any fluid. Essentially, the gradual breakdown of those retinal cells, like I mentioned before, this is what's happening. They're just slowly breaking down. And then there's wet macular degeneration. So this is when the retina starts to break down and new fragile blood vessels grow in places where they shouldn't be growing. And these little blood vessels can leak fluid or bleed, which damages the retina quite quickly. And here's the tricky part. You can actually have both types at the same time or develop wet macular degeneration in one eye while the other stays dry. Let's talk about treatment options for macular degeneration. Here's a big question that I hear often. Can macular degeneration, can AMD be cured? Well, the honest answer is no. But there are treatments to help slow it down, and this is great news. And in some cases, this treatment can help stabilize your vision. For wet macular degeneration, there's an amazing treatment involving eye injections. Now, I know it sounds pretty scary, but these medications stop the body from making new blood vessels, and they help to clean up the mess that those new blood vessels have made on the retina. I always think of it like spilled red wine on a white rug. So the quicker, the sooner you treat it, the sooner you clean it, the better the outcome will be. And for dry macular degeneration, what sort of treatment options available? Well, this is a rapidly developing area of research. And one promising approach is red light therapy, which aims to help those cells on the macula, you know, that little sweet spot that gets affected by macular degeneration. It helps them to function better, almost like rejuvenating them, sort of uh, giving them their youth back, helping them to work better, just like they did when they were younger. And for any type of macular degeneration, we also know that certain glasses, tents, and low vision aids can make everyday tasks much easier. So what about nutritional supplements, you ask? Well, there are supplements for those with macular degeneration and people who have a higher risk of developing macular degeneration. And some of the big names you're gonna hear are lutein and zeaxanthine. And remember, Taking supplements won't guarantee that you won't get macular degeneration, and it won't guarantee that it won't progress. Some supplements that have beta carotene can't be used in smokers or former smokers because of an increased risk of lung cancer. And the zinc in some of the supplements can cause concerns for many patients due to their side effects. So you've been diagnosed with macular degeneration. What should you do? What's going to happen? What should you do about it? Well, let's chat some more about that. Know that if you've been diagnosed with macular degeneration, your life isn't over, but you may need to make some adjustments. There are many well-known faces living with macular degeneration. There's actress Dame Judi Dench. There's author Stephen King. And also the late Don Knotts, who was from my favorite show with The Andy Griffith Show, he did a lot to talk about how macular degeneration affected him, and he did a lot of advocacy work for them. Here's what you can do. Have your regular eye exam. I know I talk about it all the time, but please have regular eye exams to track any changes. If you've been diagnosed with macular degeneration, go to your retinal clinic appointments as recommended by your retina specialist. And consider getting a low vision examination. So this is a more specialized care sort of eye exam with longer testing times for those with advanced sight loss. And quit smoking if you haven't done so already. 
Try to improve your diet with plenty of antioxidants and green leafy vegetables. And stay active. Movement really is medicine. You can try using tools like magnifiers or specialized reading glasses. And you can ask for stronger reading glasses. Now remember, stronger power, higher power reading glasses, you're going to have to hold things a little bit closer. And I always tell my patients, make to use to use these muscles, your bicep muscles, not your neck muscles when you're doing things like that. Because I don't want you to get too tired as you're reading. Make sure you bring the paper to you closer. You can also use special tints on your glasses, like yellow tints, and they can improve the contrast. I've actually had a patient uh, say she saw a lot better with a light pink tint on her glasses. And don't forget to do the Amsler Grid home monitoring to check for changes in your vision. Now that's that little grid that you're going to be given when you've been diagnosed with macular degeneration. You can find those online as well and download and print them off. Now, the way I tell patients to use this Amsler grid is print that out. And what I want you to do is put it on the inside of a cupboard door, on the back of a cupboard door, so that when you open up, it's right at eye level. And you want to check one eye at a time. And I want you to do that about every month to monitor for any macular degeneration progression. And just as important, everyone, please don't forget your mental health. Vision loss from any condition can feel overwhelming. So find a support group near you or find a counselor who understands what you're going through and gives you a space to talk. And then there's a condition I want to talk to you about. It's called Charles Bonnet syndrome. Now, this is where people with vision loss sometimes experience things like visual hallucinations. And knowing about it can make it a lot less frightening if it were to happen. This is a situation where the brain makes up the picture. So the vision is not seeing what you need to look at. So the brain sort of makes up the picture. And sometimes it makes up the wrong images. And sometimes it makes up quite scary things. Macular degeneration can feel very scary. But honestly, everyone, knowledge is power. Now, you know, sometimes a personal story can shape your passion for your profession or passion in life. And for me, that story begins with my grandmother, my mammy. Mrs. Bessie Simpson. She was a warm, independent, and fiercely proud woman, and she always took care of herself. And she lived in her little house in Waycross, Georgia. One day, my phone rang while I was studying at my desk in optometry school, and I can still remember me sitting at that desk and the phone ringing. Um, now, I can remember that vividly, unlike most days, I can't remember where my keys are. But it was my mammy's optometrist, Dr. Brown. Now, Dr. Brown knew I was in optometry school, and he wanted to let me know how my mammy's recent eye exam went. He emailed me a picture. Now, I eagerly logged on to see it. And it was her retina. And it was covered with a massive hemorrhage, covering all the center part of her, of her retina, right around that sweet spot. Remember, we talked about it, the macula. And this was wet macular degeneration. Turns out that several days before then, on Thanksgiving Day, she noticed a sudden loss in her central vision in her good eye. You see, she was born with a lazy eye, an amblyopia from birth in one eye, so she only really had one good eye. She said the other one was there just for looks. Now, it was Thanksgiving Day, and she didn't want to upset anybody's day. So when my daddy came to pick her up that day, and her eye problem was, guess what? She didn't even tell anybody. It wasn't until Thanksgiving was over and people went back to work and life was normal the next week that she decided to make her eye appointment. Now, she was 90 at the time, and, and she wasn't driving, but she lived very independently, and she didn't want to impose on anyone. Now, Dr. Brown called to tell me of these new clinical trials that were being done using injections in the eyes. It was sort of cutting edge stuff at the time to treat wet macular degeneration patients. But sadly, in rural South Georgia, there was no one anywhere around doing anything like that. So soon after all that happened, my mammy began calling my daddy in the middle of the night saying, well, sometimes she'd come in the daytime as well saying she was seeing kids around her house. Well, now listen, we didn't know anything about Charles Bonnet syndrome. And I don't even think I had heard, learned about it in school yet at that time. The family thought she was maybe getting dementia. You see, my mammy liked to clean house, and she also used to run a nursery. So she, she knew kids, and she knew what kind of mess kids could make. And she was seeing this in her house. This was after she suffered her sight loss. She was seeing kids in her house making a mess. You see, her eyes weren't seeing very well, so her brain was making up the story. And in her last two years, she no longer lived independently, but she lived with family. And when she'd look at us, there was sort of this blank or foggy look to her. Not confusion, 
But it's as if her central vision just wasn't there anymore, which it wasn't because of the macular degeneration. She was no longer reading. She was no longer doing word searches that she loved to do. She was no longer looking at pictures. And she was no longer watching her beloved soap opera, The Young and the Restless. But her sweet smile tried to stay as long as it could. We watched a strong, independent woman lose her sight. She told me towards the end that she didn't like living like this, not seeing, not hearing. And she said her skin was far too wrinkled despite her using that cream on it every night. And while it wasn't macular degeneration itself that took her away from us, the loss of her sight and her independence was a huge part of her decline. Watching that happen to someone I loved completely shaped my journey as an optometrist. And it changed how I speak to my macular degeneration patients and to their family members. It's why I am so passionate about preventing macular degeneration, about supporting patients, and about educating patients and their families about what to look out for, including that Charles Bonnet syndrome. Today, I want to share what I've learned so that maybe you or someone you love won't have to go through the same experience that me and my family did. So the take home for today's chat about macular degeneration is that the earlier you catch it, the more you can do to slow its progression and protect your vision. So make those eye exams a high priority and never hesitate to ask for help or support. Here in the UK, you can contact the Macular Society and you can find your nearest chapter. In the US, where I hail from, the American Macular Degeneration Foundation can be a great resource. And remember, everyone, take care of yourself and take care of your eyes. Thank you so very much for listening to the I Got You podcast with myself, Dr. Valerie Jerome. Just a little reminder, everything that we chat about here on this podcast is for info and entertainment purposes only. So if something's a little blurry, itchy, or not quite right with your eyes, book in an eye exam with your eye care provider. Take care of yourself and take care of your eyes.